player one. Can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you on that one. Oh, hi, how are you? All right. All right, welcome back. Okay, let's see where we are. So, um, so I'm going to change the uh, the schedule a bit. Um, yeah, so this week uh, we are entering week nine, and we were supposed to be starting to talk about the, the Mongo database, um, and um, and instead, I'm going to move uh, what we were going to discuss in the project prototyping and getting started. I'm going to move it over uh, to today um, and so that I can give you a little more time to work on the assignment eight. So uh, I'm going to push these down uh, one, one down uh, one week later since uh, uh, I want to give you a little more time to understand how to create the uh, HTTP servers that we discussed last week. Um, I'm going to go over that again. Uh, it is a uh, it is a very steep learning curve to uh, learn about servers uh, and also how to integrate with them using React.js. Uh, you know, thinking about um, creating controllers on the server side. You know, HTTP, get, post, put, delete, and whatnot, and manipulating uh, data types on the server, but also integrating from the client, creating services, uh, creating thunks, uh, how to integrate it with the, um, with the reducer. So I'd like to go over that again today, uh, but in the context of working towards the project, right? So, so I'm moving uh, the, the, what we were going to be covering later in the week 11. Uh, I'm going to move that to today right, as an opportunity to discuss uh, the project right, and uh, uh, to uh, go over the some of the material that we discussed last week right, on, um, on building an HTTP server uh, and how to uh, interact with it from a React.js uh, application and maintaining the state uh, both on the server side Right, and how to replicate that state on the client side. Right? It's not; it's a non-trivial uh, topic. Uh, so, but I think you know, covering it again, uh, but but and and taking this opportunity to uh, introduce the project, get going. Uh, that uh, I think will be a good um, time for to be able to review this uh, this material, which is very very important. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, so I've changed the the uh, due dates for assignment eight uh, to the uh, it was not update. It's supposed to be updated. Let's see updates. Oh. It didn't update. Uh, well, this is supposed to say the twentieth. It's supposed to say the twentieth, and this the week after that, so twenty seven. Okay, so it's due uh, not this week, but the week after that. All right. Uh, any questions on that? All right. Um, so yeah, so so we'll we'll do that today. Uh, next week, we will introduce uh, Mongo. So I'm just going to move this down one week to week number 10. 
so we'll cover Mongo next week, schemas, models, talking to the database, uh, deploying this to a remote database and whatnot. Um, and uh, so that will take us into the, uh, the week of Thanksgiving um, and where we will introduce, you know, logging in, maintaining state, uh, sign up, and things like that. We'll cover that on week 11. So just everything gets pushed down one well, which is fine, right? We're moving a couple of materials later to today, right? And then we're moving all the things down, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Um, let's get started then. So, so yeah, as I said, uh, this is gonna give us a chance to go over the project. Uh, just real quick, let's uh, go over some of the requirements of the project. Uh, Final project. Oh, sorry. Where is it? Uh, it's the first one here. <laughs> Final project response. So you should uh, get going with the project. Professor, do you, do you fix the bug in the end of the last month? Do you fix the bug? Oh, what was the bug? I don't remember. Well, we'll, we'll get a chance to do the whole thing uh, again today, uh, this week anyway. We'll probably run into the same bug. Uh, let's see. So remember, right? They, the uh, project is asking you to create these basic six screens where you have the home screen um, that. Uh, you have a search that allows you to interact with some third party uh, API. Right? We have a that allows you to search uh, content, either articles or food or sports teams or uh, movies, songs, whatever it is, allows you to search that API and then display some details. Right? So display the search results and then select one element and then show you the details of that particular movie or song or sports theme or recipe or whatever it is, all using this third party API. So, so there's going to be two columns where one's to fetch uh, a, uh, a summary of results that match a criteria and then, and then a sec second call to retrieve details of a particular item or record right? and then you display the details here. And that uh, interacting with a uh, your own uh, server, right, that allows you to store information about that particular thing that you are retrieving from the database, uh, from, from a remote database, right? So, for instance, if you like a movie or if you uh, commented on a song uh, or you like a particular uh, recipe or a particular uh, team, right, you need to be able to store that in a database, right? So to remember that this particular person likes this movie. Right, the only place where you can put that in is in your own database. Right? So we need to store that somewhere. And it has to be your server, your database. Um, also, uh, you need to be able to represent the person who's uh, interacting with this uh, system. Right? So people have to be able to log in and register, sign up, right? and then uh, store information about themselves, your profile information, uh, and maintain a public persona and a private Details that might not be available to everybody, but only to yourself when you log in and identify yourself, right? And other people can visit uh, your profile uh, and they can see the public side of the um, of the um, of the profile, right? And you get to decide what is public and what's not, right? And also, the home screen needs to be uh, dynamic. I right? show dynamic content based on Data that already exists in the system, uh, but also whether whether we know who you are or not, right? So if you logged in, you know the home screen should display things that it knows about you. Right? Maybe uh, maybe the um, and you get to choose what it is, right? If I know who you are, I might fetch some information about you specifically, right? Uh, and display it here. If I don't know who you are, then I I, should, I display things that I would display anyone, like an anonymous person. I don't know who you are. You haven't logged in yet. And both of them have to be dynamic. 
right? so that if I come in today and you don't know who I am, you might uh, suggest a movie. But if I come tomorrow, then I might want to suggest a different movie. And so it should be dynamic. And if I if they know who I am, if if the system knows who I am because I'm logged in, identify me, then it should show me maybe the last movie that I liked or the last song that I reviewed or whatever. Right? Okay, so that's the requirements. Uh, so there's a React side of this, right? That's where we're focus focusing for the most of the semester. And there's also a server side. Right? And the server side is the one that's going to allow us to store data permanently right, in a database. Okay. Right, right now we've been focusing on just on the on the front end part of this, right? That doesn't give us a chance to store anything, right? Everything is temporary, you know, within the um, within the current state of the of the browser, right? If we refresh the browser, we lose all the changes that we've done um, on the browser. So we need to permanently store this. So that's where we're going to be focusing uh, this. Uh, Last week and next and this week, right? We're gonna, you know, how do you build that server so that the client can send the information? And then the server has the capability of storing it in a file or or storing it in a database, right? Or sending it out to somewhere else. So that's 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 the skill that we're trying to learn, you know, last week and, and this week as well. So last week uh, we learned about some of the uh, some of the simpler simple things, right? That you know, to send data, retrieve data, update data, delete data. So today we're going to practice that again. We're going to create another server from scratch, uh, and um, and and then we'll we'll uh, demo how to uh, how to integrate a React application with that server. Okay, so let's learn that. Um, yeah. Any any questions? That makes sense. Okay. All right. So we had started a uh, React application uh, where we were interacting with uh, the OMDB API. Uh, so if you remember the OMDB API, it allowed us to uh, retrieve information about uh, movies, right, and TV shows. So let me uh, run this just to just re to remind ourselves what we were working on. Let's say get start. Uh, so this interacted with uh, uh, with this API. Let's go on the app. Okay, you remember it allowed us to search for movies, right? Say avatar and search, and then it would. Uh, oh, wait. Wait, what? Let's search. MDB, wait a minute. Where are we here? Uh, let me review this real quick. We had a. Um, Okay, there it is. So we have the index app. Oh, okay. So we didn't we didn't do much. <laughs> All right, that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna get to play that uh, with it today quite a bit. Okay. So we wanted to be able to search for movies uh, using this uh, IMDb OMDb API OMDb API uh, that allows to query this database for uh, data right, with an API key. And let's see. Right where? Okay, so it doesn't remember my API. Yeah. And we could retrieve data about um, any movie. Okay. So, uh, for instance, we could um, we look here real quick. Um, OMDB API yeah, key. We could uh, search. For say, for the Guardians of the Galaxy, right? And you could render information about the details of that particular movie. Okay. Uh, so the question is, you know, if I if I am retrieving data about movies, and I and I tell the client that I like that movie, 
where would we store that information, right? Uh, I mean, we could certainly store temporarily on the, in the user interface in React.js using maybe a reducer uh, or using a, a state variable. Right? But as we as we know, right, if I refresh the browser, right, all that goes away. Right? The only place to permanently store something would be at the server level. So we need an API at the server right, that would allow us uh, allow the React.js to send an HTTP request to the server and say, hey, server, you know, this person has liked this movie, right? So I need to be able to store that. Okay. So, so let's do, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's see what API, what, um, uh, what application we would need to be able to do that. Okay. All right. So, so first let's, um, let's see where we are. So we have the, the React application is here. Okay. Um, so we'll need a Node.js server counterpart right, for the, this React application to talk to the server so that they can inter integrate and, and, uh, and pass the data to the server. Uh, so let's create it. I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to create a directory uh, that, you know, based on the OMDB uh, name, right? but this is going to be a server app. So this is going to be an OMDB node server app. Okay. So let's go into that directory. I'm going to be server app. And we're going to initialize it as a node application. Notice that it's empty. There's nothing in there. Uh, let's go say npm. This creates a, creates a node application. You can, um, you can leave all of the default. It, it goes into a, a set of questions that asks you to initialize this project. Uh, you can leave it, leave all of the defaults. I'm just saying enter, 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 enter. I'm not entering anything. Um, and what it does is that it creates a package.json file, right? This one right here, that contains uh, the content of what we just typed in, right? Uh, which is all the default stuff. Notice that most of it I left it, I left blank. That's fine. Um, then we are uh, going to create a, an application, right? Uh, in the uh, in an, in an app.json, right? So let me open it using IntelliJ. You can say open this brand new and Node.js application I just created. Let's open it up. Um, and, and in here, I can create my first JavaScript file. Okay? So this is going to be uh, JavaScript, this is going to be app.js. And in here, uh, you know, we can say, we can just say console, say log, hello world. And we can run this from the command line. Okay. We say um, ls, so is that there's our app.js. We say no app.js, uh, not, not nor, no app.js. Uh, it runs it and says, says hello world, perfect. Okay. Uh, but we, we don't want to build a hello world. We want to build a server. And and the easiest way to create a server is to use the express library, express.js. Uh, you can read all about uh, Express if you go to their uh, website. Uh, I'm going to go Express.js. Uh, it's a really cool library, uh, and you can read all about it uh, here, all the documentation. So let's uh, install it. We can say npm npm install Express. Okay, um, and um, and we can grab it because now that it's installed, we can require it. Right? We can load the library using the old syntax. So we say const um, express and we say require express library. There it is. We can instantiate an express instance that. Um, you can say, I want to listen for an incoming request. So that's the whole point of, of creating a server. It says, okay, I'm going to be listening forever at incoming HTTP requests at a particular port. Um, and you can send me HTTP requests right, through a URL. Uh, and if you contact me, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. So we need to tell it what to do when certain requests come in. And those requests is whatever we want them to be. What do we want to do? 
well, maybe I want to like a movie. I want to dislike a movie. Maybe I want to leave a review for the movie. Um, I want to retrieve all the movies that I've liked. So those are all different use cases right, of things that I want to remember, store right, in the database. And right? so we have to create you know, URL endpoints for each one of these use cases. Right? Um, so here's, let's create a really simple one. I'm just going to say, I want the server to say hello to me. Right? So I, 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 uh, there's four types of requests. There's a get, a post, a put, and a delete. Right? And they're meant for four different things. Right? Uh, get is for explicitly for retrieving data from the server. Post is to create new data in the server. Uh, delete is obviously for removing data that is in the server, and put is meant for updating data that is already in the server. And those four things allow us to create basically anything. Right? It is the four basic operations that you can do on any type of data. Right? You, for any piece of data, you need to be able to create data, read data, update, and delete. CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. Okay. Um, so let's do that. And so just real quick, we're gonna say hello. Um, so with this, so the app.get, app.post, app.delete allows us to tell the server what to do when certain requests come in. Okay? And and the and there's two things I need to, to, to do. You get to tell what type is it? Is it a get, a post, a put, a delete, depending on whether we are retrieving, creating, updating, or deleting data. Um, and then you know what unique identifier or URL uniquely identifies this thing that you want to do, right? Uh, so there's a question in the chat. Uh, can we use Firestore to store data? Yes, absolutely. For the project, yes. For the project, absolutely. Not for the not for the homeworks, but definitely for the for the uh, project. Uh, so here we have a unique URL or identifier or uh, yeah, identifier uh, that is going to come in. And then we tell, well, if this, if the URL that you sent us matches this, you can tell us what, what you want us to do. We can tell it in a function, we can tell it how to handle that. Okay. Um, now, the, the, uh, the way the client or, or whoever's sending us a request and how the server responds, right, you know, is part of a, an architecture or a protocol or a mechanism by which a request comes in to, for me to do something, and then I respond with the resulting, the result of having done, right? And the way we talk back and forth is through this request response. Okay. All right. Uh, also, um, the in that order, request response. So request allows us to know everything about the person who sent us. The request and the response allows it to send back the response. Right? So right now we're not going to do anything with request. Uh, we're just going to respond and send a hello. Okay. Um, and and then uh, I'm going to listen forever, listen for incoming requests at four four thousand. Okay, that's it. This is you know. In four or five lines of code, we have built a little uh, server, a simple server, and we can run it. Say node put down itself. You want to run it at node.js. So notice that before it printed out hello world. Now it didn't do anything. It's kind of stuck, stuck there, listening forever at port 4000. Right? So we can send a request right, at localhost 4000. And it's waiting for hello. So that URL at the end. Okay. Uh, and then notice that indeed the response was hello world. Uh, so this is the basis of everything. We, we can send, we can uh, create something that is, we create, we can cause a, an ex the execution of some algorithm or, or some code remotely, right? That we can say, hey, Go do this for me. Uh, here be this browser sitting, uh, you know, maybe on the West Coast browser, and then the server running on the East Coast. Right? They can communicate back and forth. That's pretty cool. And it's the server who can store things in the uh, 
for the time thing. Right. Um, all right. So uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's now do something more interesting, right? So what do we want to do with the OMDB? Right. Well, what are we? What is the main data structure in OMDB in the uh, object movie database? Movies. Right? So movies is the main data type. Okay. We have to be able to crud movies. Okay. Um, what else do we want to do with movies? Well, we want to be able to like movies. We want to be able to review movies. Now, when you say review and like, usually that means they need to see, know, well, who is liking it, right? And who is reviewing it? So also users are also a main data type. Okay, so users, uh, likes, reviews, uh, movies. Okay, those are all four of many other types of data types. Um, and so we need to manage, be able to CRUD each one of these things. Okay, so let's create a, we're gonna create a data struct, a, um, a directory for each one of them. Okay, so movies. Okay, um, and uh, we want to be able to, uh, there's gonna be users, uh, there's gonna be likes, and they're going to be reviews. These are all different data types that we need to manage, right? Uh, so let's work on just one of them today. Maybe we'll get to some more uh, on Wednesday. So movies. So we need to be able to talk to the server about movies, right? And we need to be able to talk to it about users, right? Reviews, likes. Uh, so about movies. So how do how do we how do we talk to the server? So the server needs to be able to have a several of these endpoints like this, right? That we can talk to it about movies. Uh, kinds of things that we need to be able to do is maybe um, you know retrieve all the movies that I have liked, or or, or just the movies that it knows about. Right? So for instance. Um, you know, if I if I go out to the OMDB, uh, well, OMDB knows about lots of movies, right? I can I can ask it about um, a movie that's called Batman. Yeah, and it can come back with uh, lots of movies that match Batman. Now, none of these exist in my database. My server doesn't know anything about these movies, right? And it shouldn't at first. It should only know about Batman Begins or the Batman or whatever, only if it needs to be able to remember that Alice likes Batman, right? So somewhere in the database, it needs to be able to store the relationship between Alice and Batman. So I need a record for Alice. I need a record for Batman, right, in the database. And another record that says that Alice likes Batman. So I need three tables, right? Three different collections of things that one represents the movie, one represents the person, one represents the fact that that one person likes that movie. Make sense, right? Uh, so, but how do the movies got into the database? How do they ever get in there? Well, at first the database has, has no movies. I would only have to create a record for Batman if somebody has liked Batman. So I need to be able to create the record of Batman in there. I also need to somehow uh, retrieve all those movies, right? If people want to say, well, which movies have I liked, right? So I have to go fetch all the movies in the database that Alice has liked. It comes out where, you know, Batman, Alice likes three movies. So I have to go fetch those three records in the movie. So I need to be able to insert movies in the database. I need to be able to retrieve movies from the database. I might need to retrieve an individual movie. Okay? If I if I want to be able to see the details of a movie, I need to go fetch that one record of that movie. I need to be able to delete the movie, maybe, right? I need to be able to update that movie. Okay, so basically the four CRUD operations. So so the, the server needs to be able to listen for incoming requests about the movies, right? At least those four operations. There's a whole bunch of other operations, but at least those four, okay? 
So where do we put all that? Well, uh, as a design, you know, the design of an ar the architecture of a server application right, has different par parts of different things, different artifacts that are responsible for different things. So the, the, the code uh, that is responsible for, in, for handling incoming requests from the outside and receiving all these requests about movies or users or reviews or likes that is responsible for receiving all these requests is referred to as the controller. Okay, so there's a controller that is responsible for receiving all these HTTP requests. Okay, so let's let's write them. Let's start with a controller. So in the movies, I'm going to create a controller. So this is going to be the JavaScript. So this is going to be the movies controller. Okay, and the user is going to have its own controller. And have uh, the users controller because. It, same thing, right? We need to be able to create users, delete users, update users, retrieve users, right? Um, also, the likes is going to have its own controllers, right? We need to be able to uh, create a like saying so and so likes this movie, but we have to create insert a record. We need to retrieve all the likes, right? What are all the movies that I like? I need to go and do that, right? So there will be a controller for that too. So this will be likes. Uh, and finally, there'd be a reviews controller. Make sense? Okay. So let's take a look at the movies controller. Let's say, uh, close all the tabs. So in the controller, what do we need to do? Well, we need to be able to do a few things, right? We need to be able to um, create a movie. So if you give me a movie object, I'll be able to insert it. We need to be able to maybe retrieve all the movies. These are a few things that I'm just you know, coming up that you need. But I think of CRUD, right? We need to CRUD movies. We need to be able to create, read, we need to um, update, Movie. We need to delete movie. Make sense? Uh, same thing for users. Users will have its own CRUD operations. We need to be able to create users, find all the users, update a user, delete a user, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Right? But these are kind of the, some, some of the basic stuff. So, so let's do that. Now, controllers participate in the as the entry point of the server, right? It's the one who's receiving the incoming requests and responses, right? The, the requests are coming from the client, right, from whoever, right? and they're gonna, and then we need to respond, respond uh, to the um, to whoever provided the, as asking for the data. So all these controllers are are participating in this client server uh, request back back and forth, right? So they these all receive request response. Okay, these all receive request response. Okay, all right? Uh, so um, okay. So let's uh, let's keep going. So these uh, now these um, these functions, they right, they're going to be mapped to different types of HTTP requests. Okay? We said that there are four basic types of requests: okay? post, put, delete, and get, right? which map really nicely with the CRUD operations. Okay? So post is when we create data, so create movie. Uh, get is for retrieving data. Find all movies. Uh, put is for updating stuff in the server, right? And delete or delete remove. Okay. Uh, so just like we did here uh, in the app, we said app.get. 
Well, there is an app.post, app.put, app.delete. So let's do that. So here, there's going to be an app.get. Right, there's going to be an app.post. There's going to be app.put. Right? There's going to be an app.delete. And each one of these is going to call, it's going to invoke all these functions, all these functions. All right, so post is going to call create movie. Get is going to call find all movies. Put is going to call update movies. Update movie. And delete is going to call delete movie. So, so these are handling the incoming requests that are, are being captured by these guys. Okay. Now, very much like we did here, right, the function, this function will be invoked when the incoming request matches a particular URL pattern. Here was hello. Here, uh, the create movie, final movies, right, they, this will be invoked if the request is post. This will be invoked get, it's put, it's delete. But if it matches, if it also matches a particular path, right? And now that path um, usually is based on, you should choose a name for this path that is somewhat related to the thing that you are creating or retrieving or updating or deleting. So what are we creating? We're creating movies. What are you retrieving? You are retrieving movies. You are retrieving all the movies. Uh, so notice that these are these have the same names, movies and movies, but they're not the same, right? Because this is a post movies and this is a get movies. So they're unique actually, right? Uh, so these paths, the combination of post or the, the type of request and the path, that has to be unique. That has to be unique. So you cannot have another get that also has the same slash movies. That's a no-no, right? Uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of bugs and you know, it'll be really, really hard to debug. Fix that mistake. So what about put? So I just said that you know, this combination of types and the path, that needs to be unique. And indeed it is, right? But there's no other put in movies. The difference here is that uh, here you should also uh, tell me, right? So, so these, 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 this assumes these two, the put and the delete, assumes that there is a movie to delete, or there is already a movie to update, right? There already exists a movie that I need to update and delete. Also, assumes there is a specific movie that I want to delete. I don't want to delete all the movies. I want to delete a specific movie. Uh, whereas post assumes that, hey, I'm creating a brand new movie. I'm not assuming, I'm not talking about any particular movie. I'm, I'm not talking about a movie that already exists. I'm creating a brand new movie. So I'm adding a new movie to the already existing list of movies that is out there. Whereas put, I want to be able to modify a movie that already exists. So usually you need to tell me the ID or the unique identifier about that movie. So, so typically this, we can, we can provide that information as part of the path, right? So we say movies and then colon movie ID. And so colon, that means that this path, right, is a, a pattern that has a fixed part that starts with slash movies, literally, but then followed by a placeholder, a placeholder that I want to call MID. Right, that then I can be able to be able to parse out what that actual value is, and then I can fulfill the request. Same thing with delete. Right, you need to tell me what specific movie are you removing. Right, so movies also. That make sense. Everybody good. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so one thing here that we're missing is that. Is that I don't have app here. Where is app? App is way up here, app.js. There it is, right? Uh, so, what we need to be able to do is somehow pass this app into this file. Okay? 
Um, so what I could do is that you know, I could import right, maybe as a function, and then I can pass in this app uh, app instance. Okay. Uh, so right now we've been using fire. Um, let's um, let's change it to so that we can use the ES6 import instead. So we can say that we type, and we can say mod. So now I can go back here and change this to import express from. Okay, um, and we can test to see if this still works. It still works. Um, so to let's remove this. We're going to get so what we can do here is that we can import. You know, we can we can um, wrap this whole thing. Right? We can wrap this whole thing in a function. Right? We call it const movies controller. A function that takes an argument app. Right? And now, now we have the instance of app here. Right? And then we can just export this. And here we can import, say, import this controller. And then we can pass it, movies controller, we can pass it app. Yes? All right. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's implement a few of these. Um, so the easiest one to implement is find all movies. Okay? So first of all, we need we need um, a couple of movies. Right? So so let's um, let's declare here a few movies. Say uh, let movies and an array of movies, and we should have unique identifiers and the title of the movie, uh, maybe an avatar. And let's create just a few of these. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six, mm -hmm. and Avatar, Terminator, Alien, and I have a thing for James Cameron. Right, so I have a couple of movies. So find all movies is trivial. Right? We can just we can just say in the response, we can just send back, we can just send back uh, the movies. We can respond. If somebody if somebody does a get with the movie, we're going to call this function and the function will respond with the array of movies. All right? Let's try it out. And so if we go back here and say movies, we get back the array of movies. Perfect. Uh, we could absolutely now go to our React application and try to retrieve this data. Okay. Well, let's hold off on that. Let's hold off for now in a second. Get that in a minute. Um, what about create movies? So create movies would be what we need to be able to um, uh, pass a movie as an argument somehow, you know, the object that represents a movie. And then and then do what? Then append it to the movies array. Right? So somehow we need we need an object that is the new movie somehow. And, and then we would need to um, do uh, movies dot push this new movie. Where do we get this this object movie? Where do we get that? And then we need to respond, and then maybe we'll respond with um, request uh, response dot sent back this brand new that we just added into the array. Okay. So what if we get that? So remember, everything that comes in from the request from the client uh, is embedded in the request. And the typical thing to do is that when we do a post, post allows us to attach data as part of the message that comes in. And that data usually is encoded in the body uh, of the request. Right? Now, so so this this would be something like you know, request dot body. So request dot body allows us to parse out 
right? The content that we send and the JSON data that comes in. And hopefully that JSON object is in the format of this JSON object right here. Okay. Um, now for this to work, for this to work, the Express library would need to know how to parse JSON. And unfortunately, by default, out of the box, it doesn't know how to do that. We need to turn that on. By default, it's not on, it doesn't know how to parse it. So to turn it on, it's pretty easy. Right. Here in the Express, one of the first things you can do is you can say app.use. Now uh, app.use is it's a more generic version of app. app.get, app.post. App dot delete, app dot put, right? Uh, this one is a catch all, right? It does what we're saying here is that I don't care whether it's a put, a get, a post, a delete, all of them first do this, and then you can do the other stuff. Right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to provide an instance of a parser that knows how to extract JSON from the incoming request and dump it in the request that body. So that later, uh, later uh, functions, right, can, right, for instance, post, we'll be able to extract that body, right, and then you do whatever you want with it. Okay. So how do we turn it on? We do we, like the Express library already has a function that instantiates a JSON parser, right, Express.json returns a parser that knows how to extract JSON from the body, uh, from their message, and put it in the body, in the request body. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so unfortunately, we, we can't test it here. There's no way for us to generate a post, right? So to test it, we need something that can generate a post, right? And so for that, we're gonna use Postman. Yeah, so Postman can generate Gets, post, put, generate anything. Right. So let's let's do it here. So here, let's um, I'm going to create a request. And say add request. I'm just going to call I'm going to call it create movie. Uh, it's going to be a post, right? It's going to be that's the URL, right? That matches slash movie like. Like we said here, slash movies. I'm going to do a post to slash movie. There it is. And in the body, I'm going to include raw data that is formatted as JSON. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to provide here the movie. Say title. Title. Uh, I'm going to have it call it too. coming out later this week. So if I send it, well, maybe not the server. Maybe I need to restart the server. So I'm restart the server. Actually, before I restart the server, something I forgot to do. Uh, this movie, I'm, I'm going to extract it from the body, but I'm also going to do something that the database would do. Right? We're not using the database yet, right? but the, what, the, what the object, what the database would do is that it would provide, it would create for me like a new um, property that would have a unique identifier. And we can fake that by putting a timestamp here. So we do a new date, that's time that creates a timestamp and convert it into string by appending an empty string. So now it becomes right, a string. And then I'm going to put that in the array, and I'm just going to send it back. So let me restart the server and try that again. Post, send it. And now notice that it does return right with the name of the title of the movie and the ID. Now notice that if I refresh this, maybe that retrieves all the movies. It should include not only the four that were there already, it should include the new one that we just created. There it is, there it is, see? Okay. And if I refresh, notice that it's still there until I kill the server and bring it back and it goes back to the core, right? But at least we have a place that it remembers, you know, throughout multiple requests. 
that we could not do in the in the React application. Uh, so let's do a few more. So we have create, we find, uh, let's do delete. That's also pretty simple. Um, so delete is also going to give us notice the ID of the movie that we want to remove. I hope to parse this out from the path. So what the request does is that it parses this path, and if it finds a colon there, what it'll do is that it'll create a map, an object, a JSON, a JSON map, with where the the name that we uh, provided here will be the a key in that map, and the actual value, the actual value would be the value of that key. So the key is called request.params. Right, that's the map. And then we can use the the name that we gave it uh, as the key into that map. Okay. Uh, and so then assign it to uh, the, the local console. So we can treat it. Now that we have the ID, uh, we can just splice out that movie from the array. I can say, um, we can um, filter it out. We can say that uh, the, the, the movies, the resulting movies will be the filter right, of the splicing out. I can say, um, uh, we, we need to know the index, right? We can find the index. I guess it's easy to just uh, just filter it. We say movies, uh, movies dot filter. Right. So for each movie, I want to keep only the movies whose ID is not this ID. Right. So where m dot ID is not okay. it's in a separate line, where this movie is not this ID. Okay. So I changed it, um, and that's it. Right. And we can respond to say. We're going to respond with a send back a, an OK, right? So, yep, we, we were able to do that. Um, so, let's try it out. Let's see if this works. Let's first, restart the server. Um, and then we can generate a delete, right? So, so, I'm going to clone this, clone this duplicate, I call this delete movie. Movie and I want to remove. Let's see what movie do we have. We have um, let's remove Terminator two three four. Okay, so we'll do um, two three four. It's a delete. Save that. Run. Uh, so it comes back with an OK two hundred. Uh, if we refresh this, Terminator should not be here. Terminator is not there. Also notice that that uh, avatar two is no longer there either because we restarted the server, right? so we went back to its original four movies. Okay, um, so this is a problem, right? Because every time we restart, we kind of reset the state. But that's how that's what the database is going to fix next week, right? It's going to allow us to you know, make the changes permanent, right? That, so that even if the server restarts, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is always going to be read from the server, updating the server, delete from the server, creating into the server, inserting. And so that will be permanent, permanent. Right now, we're just manipulating this local array, right? And so next week, we're going to make it much more permanent and it'll be in the database. All right, so there we go. So we got, you know, we also got all the CRUD operators, right? We got, uh, delete, we got retrieval, we got creator. So let's do update movie. So, in the update movie, that's the more complex. We need to uh, retrieve the ID of the movie that you want to modify. Um, and we also um, need to know what are the updates to I'm going to say so what are the updates? So the updates. And that's in the body. You're going to send all the updates. And maybe I like this movie. I, I want to change the count of the movie. I want to do, you know, modify something about the movie. Uh, so the update and say uh, it's in the body. Right? So we're going to send those updates in the body. And what we do is that we're going to we're going to merge 
the data that we already have in our data collection would emerge it with the data that's coming from the client that we're passing, right? So that the changes are gonna override the events that might have already been there, right? That actually the change the title, the likes, or whatever. Uh, so let's do that. So first we need to find that new where it is in our array so that we can merge the old with the new. So we can say we'll be index. Uh, we can find the index, so we can say movies dot find index movies. Okay, where where the movie ID equals the MID. Now we know which movie you're talking about. So we're going to replace it. We're saying movies sub movie index, right? It's now going to be merge of the old movies sub movie index. So we're going to copy over the old movie into this new object and override it with the movie updates. Okay. Um, and then we're going to put it back into the movie index. Okay, so we are replacing the old movie with the merge of the old movie with the new updates. Bring it back, right? Uh, and we're going to just find some down. Some back. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's clear it out. So let's do start the program. Let's do an update. So these are the old movies that we have for. Uh, so let's say um, I liked Terminator. Right? So so maybe you know, the light is going to go up by one, and the light uh, flag might be true. Okay. So let's do that. So Terminator, let's do 234. Let's create a post. Okay. Uh, the phone is duplicate. So we we'll call this uh, update movie. And it's going to be two, three, four. I'm going to provide in the body. And this is going to be a put. Um, and it's, I'm going to say uh, uh, light. So maybe uh, lots of light. Uh, and I'm going to say, like this is going to be merged with the object that's already there. So Terminator is going to be merged with these two new fields. So we'll send this. We'll come back with an OK. If I refresh this now, I notice that Terminator now has been merged right, with, the, with the new. Uh, I can I can change uh, the title. and say title. Uh, and the title is the uh, anywhere to change that, say that, and back to OK. So I refresh, notice that the title has changed, right? It overrides whatever fields were already there with whatever updates we send. Notice that it hasn't changed the lights, doesn't change the lights, right? That stays there. Uh, it only changed that one. Everybody good? Ever still with me? OK. All right, so we have the very basics of manipulating movies. Uh, you should be able to replicate exactly what I just did. You should be able to go back and on your own, practice, you know, practice the same thing, but for uh, users, uh, not reviews <laughs> and likes, because likes and reviews are a little more complex uh, in that you know users is almost identical to what we just did for movies, right? Almost entirely identical other than the functions are going to be called differently right the arrays are going to be different fields are going to be different obviously the name of the control is going to be different the functions are going to be different um these urls are going to be you know users instead right but other than that conceptually it's identical to the movie control right uh likes and reviews is slightly different because it entails talking about two different collections Right, it's it's establishing a relationship between users and movies. Right, uh, so we'll talk about this more on Wednesday.
on how to establish relationships between two things. But I would certainly, you know, after this class, after this lecture, I would go and practice what we just did, uh, but with users. Okay. All right. So um, let's now head over to the client, right, and see how we can interact with what we just what we just built using ReactJS. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, web app here, and let's uh, create here a new component. We'll call it user story. So we'll say uh, JavaScript. It's going to be movies. Well, well, let's create a directory. Let's create a directory. It's going to be movies um, and using index. Is going to be uh, const movies. And we're going to turn for now, just around with this. So be one movies export all. Okay. Uh, so in AppJS, what we'll do is we'll just blow everything away. And our class, let's just keep the bare minimums safe. Okay. All right. Uh, so I don't know if this is already running. Okay, there's movies. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, what do we do? Let's first do the easiest thing. Let's go fetch. Data from the from the server and display it here as a list. Right, that's the easiest thing. Let's do that. So we, what do we need? We need uh, we need a reducer. Uh, we need a service, right? And we need funks. Right? We need those three things. Let's first work on the part that does this. Right, this is Postman. Postman can Fetch data and send data and delete data and update data using these two buttons, right? Generating these posts, generating these deletes, generating these puts, right? And the browser also, right? The browser can, you know, send a get and request this and get our data. Now, now we want to be able to do this exact same thing, right? Retrieving data, sending data, deleting data, putting data. So this is the same thing that we can do here with the browser. But with Postman, we want to be able to do that programmatically from the React application. So how do we do that? So the way we work that is that for each for each type of component, or for each type type of data type that we want to think uh, we want to work with, right? We want to work with movies. We want to work with users. Uh, we want to work with uh, likes. That we want to work with. The views. Now, each one of them is going to have a service. A service. And um, well, I should do it. Let's do it better now. Uh, is going to be a movie service. Right? Name. Movies service. The movies service is the counterpart or the mirror image of the tour. And so the controller we saw in the movie controller is basically waiting for these requests, right? The server on the server side is listening for incoming get, post, put, delete with these URLs, slash movies, slash movies IDs, blah, 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 right? And then it calls these functions. Well, the service is the counterpart to that. It's the one who is going to send and generate all these requests. Yes? Okay. So, so we're going to have here, just like in the controller, we're going to have a const a movie as a function. Just like we did in the controller, same thing. Same names. It doesn't matter, but uh, it's easier if you keep track of these as, as the same name. Okay. So find all movies. Okay. Const. Update movie. 
So those guys on the controller are waiting for a request. And these guys are going to generate those requests, right? So we'll say pause. Right? Yeah. Now, where are these requests going? They are going to this URL. You can say movie API URL. So let's post it there. So they all start with movies. And some of them we need to append an ID. All right, so um, let's uh, implement one of the uh, easy ones. Right, let's do first this one, find all movies. Let's do this one. Uh, so find all movies needs to be able to send what? Needs to be able to send a get as this, right? It needs to be able to send a get to this URL. Right? So, and then it's going to receive, presumably, it's going to receive this array. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so we're going to send here with. Uh, so to do this, just like there is a express library that allows you to receive requests by a server. Well, on the client side, there is a library that allows us to send those requests. And that library is called Axios. So let me stop this. So I'm going to do npm install Axios. So we're going to import that here. We'll say import axis. There we go. So uh, file movies is going to be sending these requests. Now all these requests uh, are all asynchronous. Okay? Uh, that only means right, that you have to make sure that your functions all have are all, all tagged async. Right? So all, all these guys are async. And any communication with with um, HTTP requests, right? All those communications are asynchronous. And so, for instance, when you use Axios to talk to the server, you need to wrap it inside of a an await. Right? So, what does that mean? Well, we're going to use Axios. Say Axios. We say they get where to there. And we say they get. To that URL right there. It's this one right here, right? Movies, which is this right there. So it's going to be the movies URL. Right. This Axios returns a response from the server. But this is asynchronous. This call, this invocation is asynchronous. So we need to somehow tell it to wait for this request. Right? So we're going to say, I'll wait. So now we get the response. Now the response. From the server, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff. Right? You're going to have a status, you have headers and cookies, and have a, all tons of stuff that we don't care about. We really care only about the data that is embedded in the response. So the actual movies, the array, this array, that array, right, is in the response dot data. That is the data, and then we can just return. Pretty good. Okay, that's it. Right? All, all the other ones, I really write them. Also, right? we're all writing them in a minute. Uh, but before we go uh, any further, you know, how do we get this data and render it here in the movies? Right? Here, somehow, I need some array of movies. That I need to iterate over. How do I do that? How do I get that? Usually, uh, we would use a reducer to do this. And actually, we are the piece of reducer. Okay. Uh, now, the way you work with reducers with synchronous data is slightly different of how to how do you work with data that is async. Slightly different. Right. For working with asynchronous data, you need to use thumbs. Um, if you're working with just regular data, you would just use plain all reducers functions, right? Um, so let's uh, so let's do that. We need a thunk for each one of these guys. For each one of these, we need a, a dedicated thunk. Okay? So um, also we forgot to export all these guys. 
this top is good. Uh, so let's create fun for all these. You say fun JavaScript. So these will be movies funs. So for each one of these, uh, we're going to implement uh, a fun. We'll say we we'll create a const um, create movies fun. Uh, we need a create. Oh, we never installed. Um, we never installed the um, Redux. Yeah, we need to do that, right? Let's, in, let's install Redux. So, um, again, install Redux. And move my cheat sheet. Redux. Oh no, let's see the preview sign. Dev, dev finish. Let me install the other library for Redux. The um, React Redux. See that? Seven. And to install the toolkit, right? Install that. Okay, so we got that. Okay, so we're going to create the the fun. So create a synchronous thumb, there it is, from the toolkit, perfect. And basically what this is, is just a um, a wrapper around our services. And that what this is going to allow us to do is, is to be able to have our asynchronous calls be able to dump their data right, in the reducer. That's all, right? So it is so that the reducer can interact with asynchronous data. That's all it is. So the word works is that you specify a unique identifier. So create movies. Um, and a function uh, that just calls your function, your asynchronous function. And whatever that function returns, it's put in the payload right, of the reducer. That's all it is. So we're going to call the uh, create. Uh, movie, create movie. We we'll call it create movie. Um, we can have the other ones create um, find all movies. Same thing, create movies. And create async done. So find all movies. And the function is to find all movies. And all the elements also go here. Const uh, update movie, movies, movies, fun. Oh, yeah, no, these, these names, right? Movies, well, all movies, fun. That's the naming convention that we're following. This is uh, update movie, fun. Right? And um, uh, I'll leave this up to you later. And then there's a website, please. Movies, fun. And these are all exports. So export, 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 and export. So this would be all part of a reducer. The reducer is going to be populated by the data that is that is going to uh, return in this, in this by this thumb. Right? So whatever this all movies returns, what does this movie return? It returns 
this array. Right? It returns this array of movies. Yes? So that movie, this array of movies, is what this find what this um find all movies, right? What this returns these movies. Where's that gonna end up? It's gonna end up in the payload of the reducer. Let's create that reducer. Let's create the reducer, new JavaScript the movies reducer. Uh, so we're gonna create that reducer. We're gonna say const uh, movie reducer. We can say um, create slice. Okay. Um, it's gonna have a name movies. Uh, it's gonna have an initial state. So it's gonna be an empty array of movies. We don't have them yet. They're gonna come from the uh, from the server. Right? So it's empty. No no movies. Uh, we're going to we're not going to use the reducers because reducers are for synchronous communication, right? Instead, we're going to use the extra reducers, okay? Uh, which is going to be a map of functions that are going to be invoked for each one of the thumbs. Right? So, what are the thumbs that we have? We have the find all movies thumb, right? That if it's fulfilled, it's done. Okay? Uh, Requests that go out to the server have several states. It's not like synchronous communication. Synchronous communication, right, it's just a call function, a block, and I just wait until it comes back. But communication to the server has several states. It has a state where I don't know if the server has even received the request. I don't even know if it's if this. So it's kind of like a pending. I have no idea if the server received even, if it's even listening on the other side, right? Uh, and then it might, the server might never come back and respond to me. So it might time out. Right? So it would, I would assume that it rejected the uh, the invocation. Or the server might actually respond to me within a time frame, and then the request has been fulfilled. So I need to be able to handle the various states that this request has done. So dot .fulfilled allows me to handle the final state. Okay. Um, and again, as a as a function, uh, and I handle that function here. Now, like reducers, like all reducers, uh, I get past the state and the action, just like any reducer. And it's it's based to me on whatever I want to do. Um, so what do I want to do? Like, presumably, the movies are. In the action, in the payload. Uh, so we're going to say uh, current state uh, equal action dot payload. Okay. And then we can export this. We say uh, export. Uh, oh no, we don't need to export. We just need to export the reducers. We say uh, movies export default. Movie serves dot. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have that. Uh, now we need to create the store, right, and, and provide it to the to the application. Okay. So that was in, I believe, in AppJS. Okay. So let's do that. Let's um, grab a reducer. So import the movie reducer. Um, we're going to, we're also going to need the store. We say on store. We're going to uh, configure the store, on configure the store. And the reducer um, is going to be a map. And right now it's going to be movies. It's going to be, going to be populated by the movies. Okay. And then we're going to provide to provide the store to the rest of the application. Yeah. All right. All right. Excellent. So um, the last piece is uh, the movies 
grabbing that data using a selector, right? That allows us to retrieve whatever we put in the movie. So movies, we say uh, movies, so yeah, use select work and from the state, from the state, I want to grab that slice okay, called movies. So copy them locally in my movies. Uh, oh, and we need to also kick off the fact that when we load, when we load, we want to find all the movies, go fetch them, dump that data in the state, right? So that I can I can extract it and render it. So at kickoff, right, when this loads, when this first loads, right, um, I want to dispatch from the dispatcher. Right? Um, I want to dispatch a find all movie stunt that will go fetch the movies, retrieve them, and, uh, and make them available to your movies. Right? Once the movies come back, right, I want to render them in a UL and iterate over them. Yeah, as, as I go, which movie uh, I want to render a uh, line item with a key set to movie.d and here I'm just going to render the movie.type. Okay. Now let's see if that request if I need to start the server okay, um, of the web application has to be on the start. And then we can see the the request going out from the client out to the server if the server is running uh, and responding with that uh, um, array of, of movies that we can then try to render on the front end uh, of those movies. Okay. Um, oh, find all movies in the thunks. Uh, let's see. Find all movies. Find all movies um, from the service. Oh, it's fine. Oh, let me also create movies. Okay, so let's um, see here. Oh, okay, so it's giving us a, uh, a course policy. That means that it is getting to the server, but the server is enforcing some security measures uh, that we can we can overcome by configuring the server and telling the server, hey, it's okay, trust uh, incoming requests, and even if they're from a sub-different uh, domain. Right? So to do that, uh, we can stop the server for a second, we need to install a library, npm install course, um, and then from the, the server, in the app, we need to turn that on. Say, um, the, one of the earliest things right, is to turn that on. So, force, force, and then we can turn that on. One of the earliest things we can do is tell it to use force. Right, so, let's restart that. Oh, no, that is. Yeah, 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 no. So let's try it again. And there it is. Right? Here we have the movies. Right? The, the various movies that we get from the ser from the server, from the network. The network, right? We, we notice that we went out to fetch the movies. There they are, right? And the response are the, the movies, right, that we are receiving. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, so let's do one more. Let's do being able to delete a movie. So say we have oh, or create a movie. Let's create a movie here. And so in the client, we might have a 
the movies, we might have a, uh, an input field where we can type in a new movie. So maybe an input field of type text, right? Uh, and maybe a button uh, where we can create a new movie. Right? Um, and for the title of the movie, we would have a maybe a state variable movie, a set movie. So we can edit this, use a state in the object with a um, uh, title new movie. Okay. Um, and here the input, the value might be movie dot title. And we can say that on chain. Um, we grab the event and do a, a set movie to be the old movie, uh, but the title we override with argument dot value, whatever we call it. Okay. So that we can edit it. Right. Now on the button, Click, we can say you know, on click, uh, we can uh, dispatch a, um, a from the function of create func, create func, and we can pass it as argument an object whose title is title. Um, and so this object that we pass it to the func, we would receive it as an argument here to the movie. We can pass it to the new movie here to the create movie so that we can send a post. Right, so here's the new movie. We want to send it as a post, right? According to the postman, that's what we do. We create a new movie. We send a post to that URL. We send here response, here's a response, then wait, X here to that post to that URL, and we're gonna send the new movie. It's an argument. Right? So as a response, probably is the actual movie that we were that was, was actually inserted in the array. And we're just gonna return the text. So where's that going to end up? In the payload of the reducer. So in the reducer, we can handle that create, create a movie bunk dot to fill the action. Uh, we say that state we're going to uh, append. Say push the action dot payload, which is probably the actual movie that we just inserted, right? Okay. Um, so see. Uh, let's see. Uh, title is not defined. Uh, movie index. Um, let's see. So back to here. Title is not defined. Um, title, title. So this title is, oh, it's the movie.title. Movie okay. Um, so this is, um, Avatar, Terminator, Aliens, Titanic, uh, the Abyss. Yeah, there it is. The Abyss. Um, the Avatar 2. All right, so let's see if that's true that's being added to the server. If I refresh, there they are, through the Abyss avatar. And also notice in React, if I refresh, notice that all my movies are there, right? So so I have a permanent place that I can put it on the server. Obviously, not as permanent as storing this in the database. Obviously, that would be much more permanent. Right? But that's the topic of next week. Right? This week, we're learning the skills of integrating 
a server application that can receive HTTP requests and store data in its memory. Right? And how to integrate that with a React.js application that has a Redux state management, right? That um, communicates with the server, right? Sends the data to the server, the server stores it, and then retrieve it, copy that data that comes from the server and store it in a reducer. And then the reducer can then broadcast provide that data to all the components and each component can then pick out what they want to render uh, from, the, from the server, okay? Um, so anyway, um, so on Wednesday, we're going to uh, do some more. We're going to do update, uh, we're going to do delete, okay? Um, and, and we'll talk about some more, some of the more complex relationships between various data types like liking, Reviewing, right, where we establish relationships between two things, right, a movie and a user, right, that, that you know, establishes the fact that this particular person likes that particular movie. Right? So that's slightly different. Um, still, we need to be able to crud them, right? but now it's crudding something that associates two different things. Right? So that's going to be the topic uh, for Wednesday. All right, folks, uh, that's all I have for you. Um, any questions? Uh, am I holding office hours tomorrow? Um, should update upper end map to patch is the put. Uh, yeah, you can use patch instead. That, that's also found. Uh, put is much more common than, than patch, but yes, you can use patch. Uh, tomorrow, um, yeah, I'll, help, I'll hold office hours tomorrow at eight in the morning. Um, yeah, in the morning, like I always do. Yes, regular. All right, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you.